There remains then but one word by which to express the true road, is. And on this road there are many signs that what is has no beginning, never will be destroyed, see? never will be destroyed, never will be destroyed. It's whole, still, without end. The Greek word, by the way, is perfect. It neither was nor will be. It simply is. Now, altogether, one, continuous. But there's only one word you need to know. Huh? Is. Now, there are many signs along that road where you can put other, other names on it. But it all has to come back to this one word. Is. How could you go about investigating its birth? How and whence could it have grown? I shall not allow you to say or think that it is as coming from not being. For it's impossible to say or to think that not being is. Besides, what could have stirred up activity so that it should arise from not being later rather than earlier? Necessarily, therefore, it simply is. Or simply is not. And strong conviction will not let us think that anything springs from being except itself. Now, how did he get to this? How did he get to this? Look at the way he talks about it in 2 and 3. These are all quotes that come from, presumably, a dialogue with the goddess he has, a talk with the goddess. Look at the way it goes. Never shall it be proven that not being is. From that path of inquiry, restrain your mind. Don't let custom born of everyday experience tempt your eyes to be aimless, your ear and tongue to be echoes. Let reason be your judge when you consider this much disputed question. The heart, when left to itself, misses the road. Gaze steadfastly at things which, though far away, are yet present to the mind. For you can't cut off being from being. It does not scatter itself into the universe and then reunify. Now, let's see now if we can see how he pulls together dramatic elements in the journey and see whether we can see in that interesting patterns that complement his thought. So, <clears throat> Let me suggest a structure, and we'll read it and see whether you follow it. All right? They are essentially, uh, in this work, uh, according to the way our translator has it, two primary paragraphs with three divisions. This is called the journey. It has two parts. And then when he reaches it and encounters the goddess, there's a preliminary dialogue that takes place here before then we get into some of the material we just read. Now, as you examine the first paragraph, I'd like you to be aware of several things. Number one. Throughout the entire journey, there are different kinds of beings that play a role in it, but they are all feminine. Right? They're all feminine, every one of them. So therefore, as it opens up, the steeds that draw my chariot, it's not steeds, it's feminine, it's mares. Through the entire thing, therefore, there's a dominant female role playing through the entire journey. So keep that in mind. Second, 
See how many words carry in any way, directly or indirectly, the idea of intelligence. Motion. Then, as he then proceeds into the second paragraph, again, watch the way in which the ideas of intelligence and all the forms it may take, and rest. Then, notice there comes a transition point, and both motion and rest are left behind, and then the goddess comes in. So, let's just go over the first sentence alone and tell me how many images you would say can be related to the idea of intelligence, right? right. The mares that draw my chariot, motion. What are they? The mares are doing the, the drawing. We're conducting me to the furthest most reach of my desire. See it? furthest most reach of my desire. Bringing me at length to the resounding road of the goddess along which he who knows is born through all cities. That's an interesting road, isn't it? Right? Well traveled. Along which he who knows is born through all cities. There's a route. So as you look at that, would you go along with me and say, well, the steeds obviously then must have some intelligence. They're conducting me. There's motion, drawing my chariot, right? There's a reach, a stretching forward of desire, bringing me at length onto the resounding road of the goddess along which he who knows is born through all cities. So if you would just take a number, tell me, how many images of intelligence and motion do you find in the first sentence? They're there, aren't they? See them all? Watch that now. Second sentence. Along this road, I was carried. Yes, the wise horses drew me in my chariot while maidens led the way. Intelligence again, leading the way, right? Not only that, we can say something, can we not, about the horses, they're wise, right? They're drawing along their way, good. Now notice where the energy is focused because we need to see that now because it's going to repeat itself twice. Right? Visualize it, visualize it, right? The axle urged round and round by the, by the whirling wheels on either side, glowed in the sockets and gave forth a singing hum. You hear it? Right. There they go. See that? Motion and action. The handmaidens of the sun, who had left the realms of night and had thrown back their veils from their faces, we're driving the chariot speedily towards the light. Right. See all the action? What is it? Plenty of images of intelligence and motion and motion moving towards the light, isn't it? Right. A lot of feminine images throughout the entire thing brought together into a nice unity. Watch the shift. We came to the gates of day and night which are fitted between a lintel above and a stone threshold below. Although the gates are of ethereal substance, they have the strength of might.